the act of affirmation constitutes life. We are saying yes to life each time we get out of bed and start the moment by moment actions, decisions that write our own stories. Some people engage in it idly. Some people like and enjoy it greatly. Some people do it purposefully and expertly. We write the script for our own life narrative. And that is a reality. We do not just fall into life. While we are given some circumstances and character traits at birth, we also have a great deal of freedom to make decisions that affect how our lives turn out. We may change our script and the role we play to a large extent. Each moment is what we are born into as a consequence of our deeds. According to Buddhism, karmic conditionality works via feedback loops with the present resulting from the interaction of past and present deeds. It's vital to remember that the decisions we make today have just as much influence on who we are, how we live as the patterns of prior actions, perceptions, and attitudes. We have the option to diverge from the norm and to behave differently. We become diverse when we behave and think in distinct ways. Both the present and the future are shaped by current events. In a way, with each step we take, the path ahead of us is being built under our feet. Unless you change course, you are likely to wind up where you are heading, warns a Chinese adage. Are you content with the way things are going? In Asia, it is accepted that in order to change, one must first alter their thinking or their perception of themselves. According to the Buddha, our ideas cause us to become who we are. If enough force gathers around a certain viewpoint, that perception will come to pass as experience. The rule of dominating mental impression is a concept in contemporary psychology. The subconscious mind takes an image, concept, or attitude as truth. It starts the process of making it real when it is repeatedly retained, repeated, or both. Things only happen with a certain amount of energy. When we think a ball is put in motion, if it is just a fleeting notion, little will happen as a result. In contrast, the ball that was put in motion continues to roll and gains velocity when the same concept is repeated again. This seed notion is deeply ingrained in the subconscious mind and develops its own life via repetition. Even if the notion is originally erroneous, if it is repeated often enough, the mind will eventually accept it as genuine and reality will change to reflect this truth. According to the Buddha, Mental and physical occurrences are two sides of the same coin. The mental side plays a crucial role in the development of this duality. Worldview conditions world to view. In the words of Joseph Chilton Pierce, a renowned professor on reality structures, Experience is shaped by the active forces of thought, speech, and action. Buddha said that since intention includes the choice to act, it represents the fundamental component of the act. 
it acts as the catalyst. As a result, the energy of purpose is immediately and proportionally related to the causal chain of outcomes. Realizing our ideas and goals that form the foundation for our life's occurrences. It is the first step toward meaningful transformation. Louise Hay, a metaphysical author and healer, emphasizes that our experiences are only the outside manifestations of our inner ideas. Even self-hatred, according to her, is just loathing an idea you have about yourself. You buy into the sensation that is produced by the concept. You won't have the emotion if you don't have the notion. These ideas are malleable. Change the thinking and the emotion will go. It might be difficult to start noticing the messages we are repeating to ourselves. Then, we may decide to replace unhelpful thinking patterns with ones that are beneficial to us. Consider for a second what is going through your mind right now. Is it favorable or unfavorable? Do you want this idea to influence how you live your life? Affirmations, both expressed and unsaid, are the foundation of our life. We constantly tell ourselves, I'm not clever enough. I'm not good enough. I'm terrified of rejection. I'm unworthy of love. I'm helpless. I can't handle this. I'm the sort of person who gets ill quickly. Other similar statements in our internal dialogues. These subconscious signals to ourselves are often depressing, validating our lack of success, luck, or love, as well as our flaws and shortcomings. We often confirm things. They are seed thoughts that are ingrained in our minds and become thought patterns. If there is enough energy, Thought patterns will materialize as bodily experiences through their thoughts and words. Many individuals cause themselves great and unneeded troubles. Deep cellular effects of unfavorable thoughts and emotions are harmful to the body. Negative thoughts and emotions will physically harm the body's systems over time, ultimately leading to states of energy imbalance that will emerge as illness. Contrarily, conscious affirmations support us in physically reprogramming our mind, body, and spirit, changing our thinking patterns and the outcomes that follow, the subconscious mind will essentially accept what you are saying. Ask yourself honestly whether you're truly ready to let things change. Even though we may claim to want to change, it is normal for us to secretly wish to stick to our troubles, even while it may also lead to a lot of misery. The routine has a comforting and familiar character. As body workers, we encounter this often. We must be prepared to create room for the changes. We want to see an order for them to manifest. The affirmation I am ready to modify my behavior is a good one to employ in addition to the ones you are working with. Your affirmations should be as succinct as you can without losing clarity. Be clear and detailed enough so that you can readily see it. Barry Kapka has accepted an invitation to teach insight bodywork all over the globe. Everywhere I go, people appreciate the job I do because I like to travel and educate. Simple and straightforward statements are used. Victor B.O.C., a lecturer who focuses on prosperity and affirmations, 
offers the following five criteria. Really, do you want it? Is it conceivably feasible? Will it do any damage to anyone? Does it conflict with anything else on your list? Does it suffice? You are prepared to start rewriting your life narrative. After you have decided on the 3 to 10 affirmations you wish to use, the best way to ensure that these encouraging words get ingrained in your subconscious mind, that becomes a part of your reality to write them down on a card and repeat them several times each day. Before going on to the next affirmation, say it aloud three times at least. When you first wake up, read them out loud slowly, firmly, and clearly. Since this is the time when your subconscious is most receptive, keep these intentions inside of your body's energy, field by carrying the card around in your shirt or trouser pocket. Every time you get the chance, say the affirmations out loud. Your thought form becomes stronger. The more times you repeat your affirmations, pick one of the affirmations each day and write it 10 to 20 times on a sheet of paper. Right before you go to bed, say them again. Writing, seeing, talking, and hearing are the four perceptual and kinesthetic sense experiences that is involved in reading and writing. Your awareness should be filled with this new knowledge. It is easier to further solidify the aim when visualization and affirmation are used together. Relax your body, say the affirmation aloud multiple times, and paint a vivid picture of how it will feel. And look when you achieve your objective. Feel satisfied with yourself for having already achieved your goal. Your conviction will be strengthened by strong emotions. The beneficial conduct will be reinforced by strong favorable sentiments. This can seem trivial at first, but learning a new skill requires practice. Just like learning anything new, it may be developed since it is a skill. Be patient and have faith that these affirmations will work and they will. You'll start to see improvements when you put your all into the effort. The power to intervene to choose not to confirm negativity. Instead, grow what is useful and therapeutic for your happiness. It comes with this increased awareness of the negative signals that you previously fed yourself fairly subconsciously. Be careful to include this awareness into your bodywork practice. As you start to refine your intention and realize that's how ideas and words affect your experiences. Consider the effect of the signals you send to your customers. Then keep an ear out for any subliminal affirmations they may be using while they discuss their bodies and pains. Draw attention to the opportunities for better wholeness and pleasure. Try to avoid judgmental behaviors and language, no matter how subtly. Finish sessions with remarks that are uplifting motivating, and encouraging. Encourage them to come up with their own affirmation or provide one they like. I treat my body with love and respect. I heed my body's wisdom or anything else suitable. A component of holistic bodywork is this. Thank you for watching this video. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe our YouTube channel. Light upon lights.